Hello, hello everyone. Welcome to another live happy hour hang. How are you guys? How are you feeling? Let me know. I'm so happy you're here. Happy birthday, Sacred Space. I saw it as Sacred Space's birthday. You guys, I feel like we have a lot of Aries, Tauruses. We have a lot here in the House of Hill. And I am so, so, so excited to be back with you guys. I'm excited to be here for another Monday happy hour hang. We have Mama Cass in the chat. Jessica's here. Tabitha, Michaela, Sandra, Epic Turtles here. George is here. You guys, everyone is here and joining Maria, Allie. I am so excited to see y'all here on this Monday happy hour hang. We have so much to get into on this live, you guys. We have a lot of Coachella tea to catch up on, number one, but we're also gonna be talking about Gypsy Rose. Remember how I told you guys her divorce was supposed to be amicable and drama-free? Well, turns out that's already not happening. We're also gonna be talking about Tom Cruise, which I know sounds random, but y'all love, or y'all know I love anything about cults and things of that nature. So Tom Cruise fascinates me and this report about Tom Cruise is going to fascinate y'all just as much as it fascinates me. It's about the fact that he has these weird rules and conditions for people who date him. It's weird. We're also gonna be talking about Logan Paul, we're gonna be talking about Kesha because she shaded Diddy this weekend. We're gonna be talking about Megan Fox, a lot of Megan Fox tea. Kate Middleton, I have a Kate Middleton update for you guys. Ariana Grande soft launched her relationship with Ethan Slater over on Instagram. We're also talking about this Met Gala situation with the Kardashians. Allegedly, Kylie and Kim, we don't know if they've secured an invite. So we're gonna get into that. Also have some Khloe Kardashian tea for you. Selena Gomez tea, she's clearing up some rumors about her past dating history. And then of course we have a lot of Bieber and Tavis tea to get into you guys. First of all, they almost had a run in with one another. And second of all, the Biebers were definitely doing the most to try to Tell the world that divorce is not in their future while they were at Coachella, so we have to get into that. And then obviously we're gonna talk about all of the Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey updates from the weekend, all of the videos. I also have a new report from you guys from People Magazine that's giving us some insight um, into Taylor and Travis's time off that they've been having together, where they're moving, all of that good stuff. So honestly, you guys, it is just a fantastic time for a happy hour hang. We have Miss Kim starting things off right off the bat. Hi, Madison and House of Hill fam. Hope you all had a great weekend. Pup is doing really good. Thanks for the prayers. Kim, I am so happy to hear it. I feel like a weight's been lifted off my chest, so I can't even imagine how you're feeling. You guys know here in the House of Hill, our pets are our family. So Kim, I am so happy to hear that your puppy is doing better. Truly, truly, truly. Definitely, I know what a sigh of relief that must be for you. So I am so excited for you. So happy for you and your pup. Also, Fessy, finally YouTube has stopped messing with my recommendations and notifications. Fessy, I'm so happy you were able to find the House of Hill again. Hello, welcome back. Jessica, Nan is gonna be very happy because there are a lot of Tavis updates for today's happy hour hang. So Nan is absolutely going to be happy for sure. Michaela, I couldn't agree more. Michaela said House of Hill prayers move mountains and Michaela, one million percent. Again, I feel like whenever we come together, that's when we make things happen. And I just love that you said that Michaela because I also think it goes to show what a great community we have here in the House of Hill. And that truly, truly warms my heart more than ever. I also saw someone here made it to a live for the first time and I missed your name, but I saw, I finally, oh, light, light dose of caramel dolce. I'm live, yes, I usually after watch, sending love and light. Hello, I'm so happy that you were able to make it live, which speaking of you guys, um, for all of our after watchers, first of all, hi, hello, hi after watchers, couldn't be doing this without you guys. Somebody did comment on the last happy hour hang, Detective Ina 
And she suggested that I read some of the top comments from After Watchers on the following live. So that way After Watchers feel like they're getting in on the action. That, you know, all of the House of Hill members that get to tune into the live, they feel like they're commenting back with you guys. So I wanted to go ahead and read a few comments from the last happy hour hang from the After Watchers. So in regards to us discussing Justin and Haley not going through with a divorce, as of right now, because their religion forbids it. At Always Forever asked comment saying, the fact that they are using religion as a reason not to divorce, but Haley is out here posting half naked pictures that goes against Christianity. No one wants a divorce, but don't use religion only when it's convenient for you. Christianity is a lifestyle, not just when it's convenient to you. Okay, so that was Always and Forever Us calling out the double standard on the Christianity situation. In regards to Selena Gomez allegedly not getting along with Blake Lively, at MJ's grandmam commented, I honestly feel like Taylor isn't going to be sitting with Blake to discuss any of her personal problems or tea. With the kind of status she holds, she's got to be careful with anything and everything she says and does. Her and Selena go way back and she does tell Selena everything, so the relationships are just different. Which tea absolutely completely agree and also i wanted to shout out megan murphy who woke up at 4 15 a.m to watch the tea catch up on that happy hour hang and morgan also said that we are becoming one of her favorite tea channels so morgan megan excuse me megan murphy if you are out there watching again thank you for your sweet comment and i'm so happy that you are Falling in love with the House of Hill. We love new members. We love growing our fam because the more the House of Hill grows, the more fun stuff we get to do together. So I'm going to make a point to start reading after watchers comments at the beginning of each live so that way everyone feels like they're included. Everyone feels like they are participating in the live. And I just think it's such a great idea. And I also have not forgotten about our House of Hill health challenge. I was out of town this weekend. I was in Seattle for a wedding. I did not go to Coachella um, because you guys, if you listen to mine and Courtney's podcast episode that we dropped on Friday, I think the only way I could do Coachella, you guys, is if I was backstage with Taylor and Travis because the crowds just looks like it would set off my anxiety. So the only way that I could really do Coachella where I would feel comfortable and have fun is if I was like the VIP of the VIP, not necessarily in all of the crowds because as someone who is five feet tall, that sounds like my nightmare. Um, but yes, I cannot wait to get into that. But I was in Seattle for a wedding. That is why I did not come up with, finish coming up with the health challenge, but I know that we're going to do that and I'll be posting in the community tab about that later this evening because I do want to make sure we do our health and fitness challenge in the House of Hill um, and I don't want us to lose sight of that because I think it sounds like so much fun and just another way that we can connect and another way that we can do more things together as a fam. Um, also, if you're just now tuning in, we have a lot to get into. We're going to be talking about Gypsy Rose. We're going to be talking about Tom Cruise, which I know sounds random, but if you're somebody who loves cults and Scientology, that Tom Cruise tea is going to be for you. We're also going to be talking about Logan Paul, Kesha Dragging Diddy, Megan Fox, Kate Middleton, Ariana Grande and Ethan Slater, Kendall, Kylie, and Kim, Khloe Kardashian, Selena Gomez, the Biebers having a run-in with Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, and then we're going to talk a little bit about the Biebers once again trying to deny any divorce rumors at Coachella, and then we're going to get into a lot of Taylor and Travis tea. Yes, Tamara, thank you for reminding me. If you are just now here, please go ahead and give this video a thumbs up if you haven't done so already. Make sure you're subscribed. Make sure your notification bell is on so that way when YouTube notifications work, you will get one. Um, also, I want to go ahead and shout out our international House of Hill members who are waking up and waking up early, staying up late, doing whatever they need to do to listen to the tea and tune into these happy hour hangs. We see you, we appreciate you, just like our after watchers. Y'all are truly, truly the best. Miss Patty, good evening, Maddie. Let's see, I just got home from the hospital about my hole and my about the hole in my head. Patty, 
I am so happy you're home from the hospital. I hope everything is okay. I'm happy you're home safe. Julie, I normally don't chat, but I love this community. Julie, I want you to feel comfortable chatting here. Anyone who is a silent watcher, I want you to feel confident in chatting with the House of Hill, you guys. Even if you have a differing opinion, that is 1 million percent okay. You know we welcome differing opinions here in the House of Hill as long as everyone's respectful. You know what I mean? It's, it's a fun place. We get to chat, catch up, and if you don't agree, it's okay, but please, please, please feel free to jump into the chat, truly. Uh, Christina said, just a general question, how long is your happy hour hang? Christina, yeah, that's a really good question, honestly, because it go it varies. It varies. I feel like they go anywhere from like an hour fifteen to an hour and a half. I feel like every day, every happy hour hang, I keep expanding. You know what I mean? Like I always sit down, being like, "Oh, we're gonna be chatting for an hour," and then I literally can't stop talking. Brittany said like two hours. Um, I really can't shut up. You know what I mean? I just love talking with you guys. I love connecting with you guys. I love catching up. Um, I love spilling the tea. Like I just really can't stop myself. So I like to say around an hour and a half ish, um, sometimes longer. It just kind of depends what we have on the rundown and how the conversation is flowing. We already have 200 people here in the chat, you guys. Hello, hi, please give this video a thumbs up. Yami Lex, hi Madison. Girl, I bought the highlighter. Are you obsessed? Are you obsessed? The highlighter that Yami Lex is referring to is the new Rare Beauty Blush Highlighter Combo. It's truly one of the best products ever. Ever, ever, ever. I tagged it on one of the happy hour hangs last week. I'll tag it after we're done here as well for anyone who wants to check it out. I have the color happy and I'm happily obsessed with it. It is one of the best products that Rare Beauty has ever come out with, in my opinion. Also, Shalia, I'm, I'm late. My daughter had a huge meltdown over a waffle. Did I miss anything? Shayla, no, you do not miss anything. And honestly, it happens. Funny story, and then we'll get into the tea. You saying your daughter had a meltdown over a waffle. I once had a meltdown over a takeaway restaurant putting tomatoes and bacon on my salad because I had been having a bad week, and Papa Hill literally thought I was going insane. He was like, why is Madison sobbing over the restaurant accidentally putting tomatoes and bacon on her salad? And sometimes that's just how it happens. So I relate to your daughter having a meltdown over a waffle. Depending on the day, sometimes we have meltdowns over crazy things. That was literally me at one point. We've all been there. So I'm happy you didn't miss anything. I'm happy you're tuning in and we haven't even gotten started yet. Jessica said, I'm usually a silent after watcher too. Sometimes I comment, but usually I go unnoticed. Well, Jessica, you're not going unnoticed anymore because I see you. I have my eye on you now. And yes, Shay, that was the salad from Nick and Jake's. It's like a story we always tell about me and Papa Hill having to deal with an all-girl household and how we were. I mean, you know, if you're just having a, wrong, a bad week, one little thing can really be the straw that breaks the camel's back. Lizzie said, I once had a full meltdown because I dropped my cup of noodles on the floor. Lizzie, we've all been there. We also like to call that a cottage cheese meltdown in the Hill family because one time Papa Hill dropped a container of cottage cheese and it went everywhere and he like had a full on meltdown. And so now we like to call what you would, what you had, um, that's a cottage cheese meltdown. That's a cottage cheese moment in the house, in the Hill family. Um, any big meltdown is a cottage cheese moment for sure. So, and now cottage cheese is having a comeback. So I feel like we were literally ahead of our time by always eating cottage cheese in our house. Um, Brittany said there were five girls in my house counting me. Tabitha said I cried about a spilled fountain Coke. Y'all, we've, I'm, see, we've all been there. We've all had one of those days. Everybody has those days, truly, truly, truly. Lorena said hello, listening to the tea on my way home like as if this was a podcast. Perfect, I live for it. Jenny, I'm doing good, how are you? And George said, that's funny, it's the small things that cause the biggest meltdowns. It truly, truly is, it truly is. Um, and Michaela said, oh, I know that cottage cheese got everywhere. Absolutely, Michaela, you don't even know, and that's why Papa Hill was having a meltdown. It was also like 
6.30 in the morning, a preschool mess, you know what I mean? Which back in the day, that was a big deal. And uh, yeah, so if you ever have a big meltdown or one of your kids has a big meltdown, just be like, the cottage cheese moment, it'll make you giggle, you'll clean up, and then you'll be able to move on. So you guys can adopt that in your own households, a cottage cheese meltdown, a cottage cheese moment. Jelena said, all, all it takes is an Adele song for all of my built up emotions to come tumbling down. <laughs> Jelena, what is it about Adele that just makes you want to put it on full blast and just bawl your eyes out? Um, we also have Elizabeth from London watching. Cass said Jax had a meltdown because his popsicle leaked out his hand. Cass, I get it. I get it. Um, okay, you guys, let's go ahead. Literally just now. She's like also living that same meltdown moment. Okay, you guys, let's go ahead and move on and get into the tea. We also have Normie here, Amy here as well. And I love it. Michaela said, Jelena, the way I just cackled. And I love Robert for saying, I feel safe with the House of Hill. Yes, exactly. I always want everyone to feel like they can express their opinion here because I feel like we've all been in situations where we feel like we can express our opinion, especially in today's day and age. So I feel like as long as we're respectful, that's my biggest thing, as long as everyone keeps it cute and respectful and has fun and doesn't take anything too seriously, I want everyone to feel comfortable and safe expressing their opinions here. Um, also, Dilby, much love from Germany. Laura, I'm doing good. I'm a little tired from traveling to Seattle this weekend, but I'm happy to be back and I'm happy to be sitting here with the House of Hill. Also, last thing, and then this has been a really long catch up, some of the after watchers are going to kill me for talking so long. But you guys, I did get a new tattoo. This little heart tattoo. Mama Hill peer pressured me into it. Everyone went to get a tattoo when we were in Seattle on Saturday. I fully did not intend on getting a tattoo. And then everyone peer pressured me. So I got this little very thin heart tattoo. I keep calling it a chest tattoo. Everyone's telling me it's not a chest tattoo and that I'm being dramatic. But to me, it feels like a chest tattoo. Um, so I have a new chest tattoo, and I felt like that's why I needed to change my shirt for the happy hour hang from my outfit of the day um, because I needed to show you guys and tell you guys that I literally have a chest tattoo. 31 is going to be crazy. Can you believe? Like, it's already starting off on a really wild foot. 31-year-old Madison has a chest tattoo. So it's crazy. And basically, a sleeve over here. I consider this a slave. Everyone calls me crazy, but I feel like this is a slave. So just saying, you guys, you know, we've been saying 2024 is going to be the year of the House of Hill. And apparently it's the year of the chest tattoo. So we're getting crazy. And now we're going to go ahead and get into the tea. I know my sister's laughing at me because I have been talking about this chest tattoo nonstop <laughs> since I got it because I literally had a mild panic after it was done. Like I got it done and I was like, oh no, but it's really, really cute. And it's super, super thin and really tiny. So we're getting crazy here and now we're going to get crazy and get into the tea. Kicking things off about Gypsy Rose, you guys. Gypsy Rose Blanchard's divorce is starting to become dramatic. Remember last week, Crimson Rose said Madison is in her wild era. Crimson Rose, truly. Who is 31 year old Madison? We don't even know her yet. It's wild. We're still a week away. Thank goodness. Gonna milk this 30 until as long as I can. You know what I mean? Um, Robert, I did not go to Forks this trip, but I have been to Forks twice where Twilight was filmed. I've done two Forks trips. Highly recommend. I vlog both of them. So if you need recommendations, go check out those videos. Okay, Gypsy Rose is divorced, you guys. Remember last week I told you about how there was a report from TMZ. Sources were saying she was hoping that this divorce would be amicable and not dramatic. However, according to a new report from People Magazine, it sounds like Gypsy Rose is the one who is starting all the drama when it comes to this divorce. So first of all, People Magazine reports that Gypsy Rose has now filed a temporary restraining order against her soon-to-be ex-husband, Ryan Anderson. And then in addition to filing this restraining order, you guys, Gypsy's attorney also filed documents stating that she is requesting Ryan Anderson to pay interim and long-term spousal report. The documents state that Gypsy is requesting this because she is, quote, in need, and Ryan, quote, has the ability to pay, and she is not at fault for the dissolution of their marriage. Now, in addition to that, 
Gypsy is also asking the court to deny him spousal support from her. So she wants him to pay her interim and long-term spousal support, but she does not want him coming for her money at all. Now, I feel like this is a pretty bold move considering Gypsy Rose just got out of prison three months ago. She's been hanging out with her ex-fiance ever since she separated from Ryan Anderson. So not even like I'm a big Ryan Anderson fan by any means, I'm not, but I just feel like it is a bold move out the gate for Gypsy Rose to separate from this man, file for divorce, file a restraining order, then file for him to pay her spousal support while she's hanging out with the ex-fiance. And also she wants to make sure she doesn't have to pay him anything. Uh, Normie said she's coming off sus. I agree. Um, and then Victoria said, starting to think there's no such thing as a non-dramatic divorce. Honestly, T. Uh, Jelena said, how long were they married for? I believe they were married for two years. Obviously, she was in prison for the majority of their marriage. Um, so they've really only been, I guess, out of prison as a married couple for a little less than three months because she's been out three months total. Um... The way I say, the way I see the gypsy situation was like, I can't wait for a happy hour hang so we can discuss it. Timna, I'm loving that you guys are here for the gypsy rose tea because I find it fascinating. I find it absolutely fascinating. Marie said gypsy rose is Delulu. And then Tabitha said, what is the restraining order for? Tabitha, I was also kind of trying to dig further into that because they didn't really give a specific reason as to why she was requesting the restraining order my speculation is she filed the restraining order that way a he probably can't talk about her publicly because you remember I told you guys he was posting on social media being like the real story is gonna take come out lifetime was filming a lot so I think she wants to prevent him from speaking out and I don't know if anything physical ever happened between them that was not made clear um, in the reports that, or in the paperwork that People Magazine published. So they just said that she filed the restraining order and then she's asking for interim and long-term spousal support, which I don't know how that works. I don't know if she'll get it, but the man is a special education teacher for a high school or middle school. So it's not like, which it's a crime that our teachers don't make more money in this country, but it's not like the man is making millions and millions of dollars. If anything, I feel like Gypsy Rose would have been the breadwinner in that situation, but maybe that's why she's trying to get ahead of it and say, I want him to pay me spousal support and I'm going to go ahead and ask the court to deny him to ask me if I can pay him. You know what I mean? So I don't know. Amy said, I think sometimes exes try to be the first one to file an order. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. Priscilla said she loves the attention spotlight and the money coming in from books, TV, etc. She wants all she can get and more. T. I, I do think it's coming off um, a little, a little greedy. You know, I just feel like she has this new lease on life. She's been released from prison, you know, after going through what she went through, I would think that she would just not want any toxicity in her life, but who knows? You know what I mean? I'm also giggling at all of the, the D is fire jokes in the chat. Um, I'm seeing them and I'm giggling. Robert just said, clearly the D wasn't fire and Robert, clearly. That still gives me the heebie-jeebies, you guys, that she commented that on Instagram. I'm still not over it. Uh, Jessica said, spoiled. She had it all and she wants more, but I want to see the new nose. I want to see the new nose as well. Jelena said, I get divorced, but this is wild. That's how I feel too. I just feel like they weren't married long enough or even got to live as a married couple long enough for there to be a dramatic divorce. But apparently we are wrong, you guys. Three months out of prison is enough to start the drama. So we'll see. Remember, um, whenever he spoke out on his social media, he said that Lifetime has been filming and the truth will prevail. So we will see what happens when Lifetime puts out their footage. Um, I think it will be interesting. And I think that's either going to make everyone continue uplifting Gypsy Rose or people are going to start feeling for the ex-husband. And I also wonder 
like how the ex-fiance Ken Urker fits into all of this. You know what I mean? Um, because Ken Urker was her ex-fiance who she's been hanging out with as well. So it's really, really interesting. Um, but let's go ahead, you guys, and move on and talk about Tom Cruise. Because although it, we rarely talk about Tom Cruise in the House of Hill, this report is so interesting to me. Um, I'm also laughing. Jelena said, how long do we think it will take before she gets with Pete Davidson? Jelena, can you imagine? Can you imagine? Okay, so you guys know I live... This sounds weird, but it's just... I think it's the true crime aspect of things that I enjoy. But I live for documentaries about cults. I live for learning about cults. When I was in college, I took a class about cults and other religious movements. So therefore, I find Scientology fascinating. Therefore, I also find Tom Cruise fascinating because Leah Remini, who we stand here in the House of Hill, has not taken her foot off of Tom Cruise's neck or the neck of Scientology since she left. And I just cannot get enough. And this new report from In Touch Weekly is just kind of feeding in to the weirdness that we've heard about Tom Cruise and Scientology. And this new report is all about his list of conditions for a girlfriend. So real quick reminder for those of you who need it, Tom Cruise broke up with his last girlfriend in February. Her name was Elsina Kairova. She was 36, he's 61, and prior to him splitting with his ex-girlfriend, you guys, this woman's ex-husband did an interview where he told Tom Cruise to keep his eyes and wallet open because he claimed he spent over $14 million on his ex-wife when they were together. Now, according to a new report from In Touch Weekly, this interview from his ex-girlfriend's ex-husband might have ultimately been what caused Tom to end things. This insider said, quote, Tom has a list of conditions for his romantic partners. One of them is that they can't have chatty friends or relatives who might go to the media. Other requirements include, quote, they have to be open to joining his faith. Marriage is a must. And apparently there's a height issue, so his partner's heels can't be too high. It also sounds like the list might not end there because this insider ended their info, info saying, quote, at this point, he could be undateable. Do you think at this point, Tom Cruise is undateable? He is 61 and he has not been able to lock down another wife after Katie, Katie Holmes. He has not been married since her. I also just saw, for those of you talking about Surrey Cruz, I just saw, do you wanna feel old? Surrey Cruz is 18, you guys. I remember when Surrey Cruz was born and she's turning 18 and hanging out with her friends in the city and I've never felt more old. Like, I'm sorry, Surrey Cruz, you should be five years old, 18, Never felt more old in my life, but insane, you guys, insane. Also, the fact that they have to be open to joining his faith, marriage is a must. For me right there, that's why he's undateable. You know what I mean? Jocelyn said, I wouldn't date a Scientologist. Exactly, and I'd tell any woman to not date him. Jocelyn, that was it for me right there. The heels thing, not an issue for me personally, because like I told you guys, I'm five feet tall, so I'm shorter than a lot of men already, so that's not the issue for me. But the they have to be open to joining his faith and marriage is a must. That right there, it's a wrap. For me, who at this point is willingly joining Scientology? Like, we've seen the documentaries. We've heard Leah Remini. We've, I better not say it too many times because I'm scared. I'm scared of them for real. But I just feel like that is insane an insane ask and i feel like at this point for me in my opinion tom cruise is undateable because that would just be a no for me and i found it absolutely wild that he has these this list of conditions not having not dating somebody with chatty family and friends that seems like okay fair um but the having them join his faith and marriage is a must it's a wrap right there absolutely not. Um, I just, I can't, I really can't. Scientology spooks me to my core. And 
what's crazy is the last company I was freelancing for, they had where their office was, was right next to a Scientology center where the Sea Org members would go. And I would always see them coming in and out, coming in and out. And I was always like, mm, red flag, red freaking flag. Um, so crazy about Tom Cruise, you guys. I don't know if we're going to see him date anyone publicly again. Maybe we will. I don't know. Maybe there's going to be some young girl out there who's down for it. I remember in Leah Remini's book, she talked about how the Church of Scientology does allegedly actively um, try to find Tom Cruise women to date. So maybe I guess if the church finds him somebody, then that condition will be a mute point and it'll be game over, but crazy. Absolutely crazy. Cass said, women may see dollar signs and think they'll go for it, but when they're like, yeah, no, the money isn't even worth this. I would hope that some people, you know, have have a, a moral compass, but you never know. And then Crystal said, did anyone ever find the missing wife? I can't remember her name. Miscavige? Is it Linda Miscavige? No. What is her, David Miscavige's wife's name? That's who you're talking about. And that's who Leah Remini is like, Shelly. Thank you, Allie. Shelly Miscavige. Um, no, she is still missing. And Leah Remini, you guys, is still looking for her. Leah Remini still, I follow Leah Remini. I don't follow a lot of people on Twitter. Y'all know this. Twitter's not really my social media app. But every once in a while, I will go peruse on there, and <laughs> Leah Remini is still filing reports with the police, still writing open letters, trying to find the leader of Scientology's wife. For those of you who don't know who Shelley Miscavige is, the leader of Scientology, David Miscavige, he's married to Shelley Miscavige. And according to Leah Remini, Shelly Miscavige has not been seen in public for like over a decade. Nobody knows where she is. Think of the Kay Middleton situation, but actually serious and times about a thousand. Um, so <laughs> that's who everyone's talking about. And no, to my knowledge, she has not been found. And it's crazy. And if you guys want documentaries to watch on Scientology, DM me and I will tell you because I've watched them all. I have watched them all. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Logan Paul really quick. You guys, Logan Paul, can you believe this? The controversial YouTuber turned boxer Logan Paul is going to be a father. Never thought I'd see the day, but he is expecting his first child with his Sports Illustrated model girlfriend, Nina Agdal. Sources confirmed that Nina is a few months along and that the two could not be happier about their baby on their way. Logan and Nina confirmed the news on Instagram saying that another Paul is coming this fall. For me, this feels insane because I feel like I've been covering Logan Paul's controversies for years now. So the fact that he is now going to be a dad, it makes me feel almost as weird as finding out today that Siri Cruz is 18. It's crazy. Epic Turtle says, hope Logan pays back the people he scammed. T. Uh, cousin said, Logan Paul is the US champ in the WWE. Cousin loves wrestling. That's her new niche. I knew you would know that, cousin. Um, yes, you guys, he is still, oh, I said boxer, wrestler. I see, I see the correction now. I'm a bad sports person because I lumped them all into the same category, but you guys are saying, Wrestler and boxler, two different things. You're correct. Um, excuse me. That was totally my bad. Um, he is in the WWE, not a boxer. I was lumping them into the same category. Regardless, he's going to be a dad. And it's crazy. It is crazy, crazy, crazy to me. Michaela said, I really hope he doesn't have a girl. We'll see. They didn't say what they're having. I don't even think that they are far along enough to know yet, but they did confirm the pregnancy on Instagram. He has been a little less problematic in recent years, Allie. You're exactly right. Um, he's not doing as many shenanigans as he was back in the day in like the height of his YouTube career. However, I still feel like he has a reputation of being controversial. He has cleaned up his act, and I think that's amazing. Um, but in my opinion, he'll always be the person who posted that Suicide Forest video, which I guess is bad on me. I should let the man move on, but I'm a Taurus. 
I forgive, but I never forget. So I'm happy he's a dad. I'm happy he's moved on with his life. I'm happy he's moved on with his career, but I'll never forget what he did in his past. You know what I mean? Um, Jody, I do not know much about tennis at all. <laughs> um, I do love the movie Wimbledon and I'm looking forward to the news and day of tennis movie. If that gives you any indication on how little I know about tennis. Uh, Jelena said it was literally everywhere. It really was. Exactly. And Allie, that is my favorite new saying. Allie said, you bury the hatchet, but you keep maps of where you put them. Allie, I need that on a canvas. You bury the hatchet, but you keep maps of where you put them. Absolutely. It is Taylor. <laughs> I am dying. And that's why we love Miss Swift. Okay. We're going to go ahead and move on and talk about Kesha shading Diddy, you guys, because Kesha, I'm actually living for this moment. So she made a surprise appearance at Coachella, you guys. She appeared as Renee Rapp's special guest during her set, and they obviously performed Kesha's hit song, TikTok. However, she made sure to change the lyrics during this performance to make her feelings on Diddy be known. So as you guys know, Kesha's song normally starts off saying, wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. However, she changed the lyrics at Coachella to say, wake up in the morning like P. Diddy. And honestly, iconic. I'm living for it. Obviously, this lyric change is because of all of Diddy's ongoing legal trouble that we've been covering nonstop. And I feel like it was really powerful coming from Kesha because we know Kesha has dealt with her own situation with Dr. Luke. And to hear her take a stand against Diddy and just like no stuttering, saying it with her full chest, I was here for it. Um, I liked it. I loved it. She sang it with her whole chest. She absolutely did. Epic Turtle said, love her for that. Robert said, I love Kesha. Kesha, she's such an inspiration. And you know what, honestly, aside from agreeing with what Kesha said, I was happy to see Kesha make headlines for performing and doing her thing. I feel like for so many years, her name was in the headlines because it was tied to her ongoing legal situation with Dr. Luke. And seeing her name in the headlines for performing at Coachella and making her stance known on Diddy, I was just living for it. I feel like she deserves this time in the sun and I'm so happy for her. Truly, absolutely live for every second of it. And the fact that it was during Renee Rapp's set, Ren Renee Rapp, you guys, if you don't know anything about her, she is in the new Mean Girls reboot, the musical, because she played Regina George on Broadway during the musical. But if you don't know anything about her, she is the sassiest, no-nonsense artist and really go look up any of her interviews. Like, she is hilarious. She does not put up with anything, any BS. She has no problem calling people out. So I just feel like the whole thing of, like, Kesha being up there with Renee Rapp while calling out Diddy, knowing Renee probably was like, hell yeah, do it. Just the perfect ecosystem to call out a once powerful man who is finally having to face the consequences of his actions. I couldn't have picked a better scenario. Women supporting women, exactly. Sacred Space said she cuts right through phony interviews. I love it. Laura said, I only wish the very best for Kesha and that love Kesha and Renee. Shay said women supporting women. Absolutely. I live for it. Um, and Ali said, Renee is the new Mean Girl musical, T. Jessica said, we should all be singing it like that from now on. Jessica, you already know I was thinking that. I was like, petition to officially change the lyrics. To wake up in the morning feeling like P. Diddy. Here for it. Absolutely 1000% here for it. Okay, let's move on and talk about Megan Fox. A little bit more Coachella to you guys. Because Megan Fox... Low-key, kind of shaded Machine Gun Kelly amid news that their engagement is on and off again. Remember, we are kind of confused on the current status of Megan Fox and Machine Gun Kelly because one minute she's talking, they're together. The next minute we're hearing they're no longer together. 
It's very confusing, very on and off. But while speaking to E! News this weekend at Coachella, Megan was asked about her advice for single girls this summer. And she said, quote, just learn a skill or develop a hobby and do not waste your energy on boys. All they're going to do is drain you. Just move on. Invest in yourself. Interestingly enough, you guys, E! News posted this clip on social media and, Mach and Machine Gun Kelly commented on this video of Megan Fox saying, preach. And then Kim Kardashian also commented saying, not, not, no. But to me, the weirder comment is from Machine Gun Kelly. So Megan Fox is up here telling women, go learn a hobby. Don't waste your energy on boys. They're going to drain you. Move on. Invest in yourself. And Machine Gun Kelly commented on her saying that, saying preach. It's very confusing. The last we heard about them, like I said, is after, you know, Megan's call her daddy interview where she did confirm their engagement was kind of off and on. A source spoke to Us Magazine saying that the two are up and down and working through a rough patch in their relationship. And in my opinion, this just confirms that the two are still working on this rough patch in their relationship. Layla said, I'm so over them. Viri said, I mean, she isn't wrong. Um, I agree. Like, she's definitely not wrong. Men are draining. Oh, I don't, I, I don't want to totally, say. men are draining, but not the men here in the house of hell. We love our men here in the house of hell. So men can be draining aside from the men in the house of hell. And aside from the boyfriends of the house of hell who watch the tea. Okay. You're excluded from this comment, but men can be draining. I do get what she's saying. I feel like she was definitely going for like the iconic headline making answer for sure. But just super weird for MGK to comment on it. Like, I don't know. I don't know how I felt about it. You guys know that I feel like they have kind of a toxic relationship. Um, and I just feel like this is more proof of that. Like, she's publicly saying, don't date anyone. And then he's commenting on it. It's just... Timna said, I've never seen a more confusing pair, and that's kind of how I feel. Superstar Bella said, what kind of middle school relationship is this? It definitely feels like a middle school relationship. Epic Turtle said, Megan West, <laughs> Megan wasted a lot of blood, sweat, and tears on him. Literally. That's the tea. Absolutely, she did. It's just, they are walking red flags, Crimson Rose said. Absolutely walking red flags. Women can also be draining. Absolutely. And exactly, George, not all men are draining. I feel like you got to find the right one. And the right man is probably not the one who's commenting on the Instagram video of you saying that, saying preach. You know what I mean? I feel like at one point, everyone was very, exactly, Michaela, George said not me and I stand. That's why I had to correct myself because I'm like, oh, no, 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 George and Robert excluded from this conversation. Also, all the ladies in here who say their boyfriends watch the tea with them excluded from the situation it just it's giving toxic it's giving that they need to go their separate ways I feel like I know she said they're always going to be tethered to each other I know she said they're always going to have something for one another but I think it's time for them to just go ahead and separate because to Lizzie's point mine is so energizing he would be very hurt if I posted what Megan did. I think when you're with the right partner, you feel energized. You feel like you can take on the world together. You don't feel like either of you are draining anyone. You know what I mean? I just feel like if you feel like you are being drained in a relationship, you're not in the right relationship. And it's sad that she is so openly out here. Um almost kind of promoting a little toxicity. It's it's crazy. Uh, Cass said, these dang kids, I went to the other room for three minutes, should have known because they were behaving and they ate like 12 cookies. So dinner will be something simple because they won't be eating it. SMDH, JJ is crying, Jax is laughing. Honestly, Cass, I will say, kind of a win because now you have an easy dinner and I can't fault them for eating 12 cookies because I live for a cookie. So I'm absolutely dying. She said, these kids are giving me gray hair. You know what? Gray hair is in. Just call it super platinum. You know what I mean? I am dying. Jennifer said, I feel like he's being sarcastic. Oh, definitely being sarcastic. But again, the fact that they're like 
openly kind of going at one another on social media is just uncomfortable. It's kind of like, you guys know when you've been around a couple who openly argues in front of you and it's super uncomfortable where they're like constantly nitpicking one another and like constantly kind of making jabs and you're sitting there like, huh, okay, huh, oh, oh, there goes another one. Oh, another rude comment. Oh, this is uncomfortable. That's kind of what it feels like right now to watch Megan Fox and MGK. It kind of feels like we are watching a couple poke jabs at one another and like awkwardly argue in front of us and it's extremely uncomfortable for everyone. You know what I mean? It's like giving us all the ick, Amy. Um, and that's what I feel like right now when I watch MGK and Megan Fox. Like, I just feel like I'm watching a, cu a couple argue in front of me and it's uncomfortable. Also some added funny tea about Megan Fox, you guys. Um, she did defend Chelsea Blackwell from Love is Blind, for all my Love is Blind people. Um, Chelsea is the girl who said, People tell her she looks like Megan Fox and the internet absolutely dragged her through the mud for it. Megan told E! News that she's never had more people text her and come up to her about something that she has no clue about. She said she doesn't watch reality TV, so she had no idea about the Love is Blind situation, but she insisted um, that Chelsea didn't deserve to get bullied. She said, quote, I think people went way too hard. And after seeing a photo of her, Megan said she 100% believes some people have told her that. She then said, quote, I hope she still has that sparkle in her eye. I hope the world didn't steal it from her. Mine died long ago from being bullied for 20 years. So I hope that didn't happen to her. Best wishes and blessings. So kind of a sad comment, in my opinion, when she said, I hope the world didn't steal the sparkle from her eye. Mine died a long time ago. Kind of sad, but Chelsea Blackwell should feel vindicated that even the Megan Fox said, I see the comparisons. She's a beautiful girl and I wish her nothing but the best. Best wishes and blessings. You know what I mean? Um, Tabitha, I agree. She is, she is sad. I hope she can figure it, figure it out because... Sometimes she makes these comments and I'm like, oh man, sad. Uh, Jelena said, at least she knows she exists. I'm sure she's hyped. Honestly, T, it's kind of cool knowing that Megan Fox knows you exist and also confirms that you do resemble her. A compliment, you know what I mean? Um, let's go ahead and move on and get into the Kate Middleton tea. That way we can, because we still have a lot of tea to get into before we get into like the Selena Bieber's and Tavis tea. Um, Kate Middleton tea, really quick, you guys. Cousin, I would like to check in and say that the tea today is helping me on this walk. It's humid AF, but I'm pushing through. Ah, that Missouri humidity, cousin. Man, I will say I miss you, but I don't miss that. And I'm so happy that the tea is getting you through your walk. You're, you're on the health challenge already. Cousin, that means you have to also join the health challenge when we do it. Just saying. Okay, Kate Middleton, you guys. New report from Life and Style Magazine, a source shared that Kate is, quote, anxious to get back to jugg juggling royal duties and her children amid her ongoing treatments. This insider said that Kate will return, or Kate's return will still take some time, but, quote, thankfully she has the support of her family. The source also added that William has been by Kate's side as much as possible, and he's, quote, been a pillar of strength. William, in addition to Kate's mom, Carol, who's also been a great help. Um, and then the insider said that Kate is, quote, so grateful to everyone, including her loyal staff, for pitching in. So Kate Middleton, still going through treatments, anxious to get back to work, anxious to get back to her royal duties. Also, it is confirmed Prince Harry will be making a trip back to the UK for the 10-year anniversary of the Invictus Games in just a few weeks. I believe it is the first weekend in May. So it will be very interesting to see if William and Kate decide to meet with him or if they don't end up meeting. Something to keep an eye on, something to keep a look, a look at because I think it will be very telling of the future of their relationship if they end up meeting with him. Um, obviously, we know they don't get along right now. Obviously, we know they're not really speaking right now. However, I think if William and Kate do decide to meet with Harry while he's in town, that will show that they have potential to fix their relationship. 
I feel like if they decide not to meet, that will tell me that Kate and William have no, no want or desire to ever repair their relationship with Harry. So I feel like his next visit will really, really be pivotal, pivotal um, and possibly moving forward. And Charlie, I agree. Charlie Horse said, I hope they meet and mend. I do too, which I know a lot of people like to call me naive for thinking that, but I hope one day that they are able to find their way back to being brothers. I know they've always kind of had animosity towards one another, but I hope that they can, you know, come back together at some point because I'm a Princess Diana stan and I do believe that is what she would want. Um, Allie said, did you hear Megan is getting a cooking show? Yes, I heard that. Her and Harry are also working on a new Netflix documentary. Um, so they're very busy. They're very, very busy. Um, but I do hope they all meet up whenever Harry is in the UK next month, personally. Okay, let's go ahead, move on, and talk about Ariana Grande. Mary said, me too. I really hate when siblings drift apart. T, Superstar Bella said, if William doesn't grow up and act like an older brother and not a sociopath soon, to be king. Superstar Bella, call it like you see it. I live for it. Okay, Ariana Grande, you guys. She soft launched her relationship with Ethan Slater on Instagram. She posted a series of photos of her and the Wicked cast to Instagram from CinemaCon. It took place this past weekend in Las Vegas. If you go through her recent Instagram post, you have to scroll through. It's a subtle selfie of the entire Wicked cast, but Ethan Slater has officially made his first appearance on her Instagram. Also a source told page six that Ariana and Ethan were not hiding their relationship at CinemaCon. Ethan was reportedly seen leading Ariana through a party by hand. The source said he was taking the lead. Interestingly enough, the source also said that the studio execs who were there didn't seem to be put off by Ariana and Ethan's relationship. The source said that the studio didn't seem worried and that Ethan and Ariana were affectionate and sweet. Tamara said, Ariana Grande, whose man is she taking now? <laughs> Tabitha, that killed me. Also, Justice, I'm so happy you're here. We haven't seen you in a minute. I'm so happy you made it back in the chat. Justice said, honestly, good for them. I mean, here's what I'll say. Obviously, they're together. Obviously, they're going public. Obviously, they're not hiding their relationship at all anymore, regardless of what people feel about them, regardless of the fact that Ethan Slater's divorce is not finalized. I will say I was a little surprised to hear that the studio execs were so chill about their relationship because I did say a few months back, I feel like the studio is probably looking at them saying, okay, you guys have now gone public. Everyone knows about your relationship. You will be together through all of this wicked promo because we're not having a don't worry darling situation. You're together now until this movie is done being promoted. Um, but it sounds like the studio is not even taking it that far. According to the source who spoke to page six, it sounds like the studio is just like happy for them. They're not sweating it. Ethan and Ari aren't sweating it. Now it's very out in the open that they're together. The cast is fine with it and it is what it is. Marie said should have stayed in the pineapple. <laughs> we guess he plays SpongeBob as well. Um, Ali said I've never liked art. I've never liked Ariana Grande, yes, but I've never liked her music more. Timna said, still can't believe Ethan left his wife and newborn for Ariana. For Ariana, Imagine being the wife. Babu said, I feel very bad for the wife. I do feel like that's, that's who it really sucks for in this situation. Like, obviously, Don Gomez has moved on. Don Gomez doesn't care. Oh, well, maybe that might be strong. I believe he cares, but Don Gomez has moved on. Um... I do feel for his ex-wife, I feel like still seeing these headlines of like, Ariana soft launching her relationship with Ethan Slater, Ariana and Ethan being very affectionate at CinemaCon, like that still has to be hard. I don't, I guess I don't know, but in my opinion, if I were in her shoes, I think it would still be really hard for me to see headlines like that. I feel like I would not be at a place of forgiveness just yet. I would still fe be feeling like I need a little revenge. You know what I mean? Um, but 
Maybe that's not how Lily J is. Maybe, you know, she's worked through it. I just still feel like it would be, it would be hard. But I have to hand it to him. I will say, I have to hand it to Ari and I have to hand it to Ethan that they are now just like fully out in the public and you either take it or leave it. I mean, at this point, I feel like that's their only option. Redmond just said, I don't know if I believe that the studio is okay with it, TBH. In general, I think they regret giving the role to Ariana. Didn't she or the director say that Ariana was a second bid? I feel like that was Ariana who might have said that, but it's also hard because I feel like Ariana tries to always be very humble. And so I feel like that was Ariana being her humble self. Um, but I feel like the studio maybe at first was not for it, but maybe now that they've seen that they are staying together and maybe now that they've seen them with their own two eyes together at CinemaCon and they've seen them be affectionate and be in love, maybe now the studio's like, well, we can't stop two people from being together, so good for them. You know what I mean? Maybe that's why at this point the studio is just happy for them. Um, Betty said, does Ariana get that baby in the custody agreement? That'd make me ill as the mom. I don't think Ariana would have anything to do in the custody agreement. Obviously, the last we heard, Lily J and um, Ethan Slater, they were discussing custody. He wants 50-50. Um, but I'm sure that will be a point of contention because obviously, if Ethan and Ariana are living together, which we've heard reports that they are, um, whenever the child is with Ethan, it's likely that child is gonna be around Ariana, um, which is crazy. Jessica said, Ari will be a stepmom. Crazy, T. Um, Rui said, that's wild. Him and Ari are messy. And then Rosa said, I don't know, but Ariana with my baby? Hell no. And then Laura said, Ethan does look a lot like Ari's brother. And Laura, you know, ever since that meme of people comparing Ethan Slater and Frankie Grande, I haven't been able to see it. I haven't been able to unsee it. And it is the content of what nightmares are made of, honestly. It is the spookiest thing. And I'm sure Ariana has seen that. And the fact that she's able to still do what she does with Ethan Slater, God love her. Because couldn't be me. Couldn't be me. None of us can unsee it. It's truly, dare I say, one of the worst things to happen to us here in the House of Hill is that meme. Like, absolutely unfortunate for all of us. Um, also, you guys, we have over 300 people here. We have 324 people here in the chat if you've not given this video a thumbs up yet can you please go ahead and do so that helps youtube know that people are watching and engaging and if people haven't gotten their notification yet they will get it before we get into this kardashian tea and bieber and tavis tea someone said kaylee said i give them two years max we'll see we'll see i feel like two years is even dare i say a little generous i don't know maybe i'm wrong maybe they are really in love Maybe they really are in love, you guys, and I'm just being cynical about it. Um, I do feel like Ariana, to your point, Kaylee, I do feel like Ariana kind of always has this, like, two-year time gap where she always lasts two to three years with somebody, and then she, you know, wants to move on. So you might be right about it. Obviously, I hope for both of their sake that they're happy. I hope this is long-term. Obviously, it was very dramatic, everything that happened when they got together. So I hope it's worth it. I hope they are together forever. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. You know what I mean? Um, Jada, Jada, don't even do that to me. Jada said, Tavis only has two years. Jada Smith, don't break my heart before we get to the Tavis tea. I'm dying. Okay, let's go ahead and get into this Kardashian tea, you guys. Um, specifically about the Met Gala. From a new report, according to a new report from page six, a source confirmed some celebs who we can expect to see at the Met Gala. So far, it's all the usual suspects, okay? Rihanna, Jennifer Lopez is a co-chair, so she's going to be there. We'll see um, what her and Ben Affleck are doing. Blake Lively, 333 people are here in the chat. You guys go ahead and make a wish. Manifest what you want to manifest. So no like crazy new additions necessarily, but what was interesting to me in this page six report is that the source revealed that Kendall is the only Car Jenner so far who has a confirmed invite. Kim and Kylie.
highly have not been confirmed. And this is some tea because typically Kendall, Kylie, and Kim are like the three car Jenner sisters who are always at the Met Gala no matter what. Chloe and Courtney and Chris are floaters. Every, they're not always there all together. Um, but I found it incredibly odd that this source said that the only confirmed invite is Kendall. Kim and Kylie have not been confirmed. Um, Jelena said, that's odd, it's only for Kendall. Sacred Space said, I'm excited for the Met Gala theme. It sounds like it's gonna be beautiful, plus Chris Hemsworth being co-chair. Yes, thank you. The theme is, I think it's like in the garden or out of the garden, something about the garden, garden theme of some sort. Um, so it will be interesting to see what ends up happening. It will be interesting to see who ends up coming. I feel like Kim will be there for sure, right? I don't know. I also feel like we've seen some interesting videos about Kim and Anna Wintour, like where it kind of looks like Anna Wintour is snubbing her a little bit. Um, but I agree with you guys. There's always rumors about the Kardashians. Jada said it. Crystal Vibe said it. Normally, I feel like the rumors are about Chloe. I mean, for years, there have been rumors about Chloe not being like fashionable enough to attend the Met. Um, and so that has been rumors forever. And then she finally attended and she slayed. She looked really good. So I feel like that kind of put all of those rumors to rest. But we'll see. I feel like for sure Kim will be there as well. If anything, it's Kendall and Kim. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I saw someone say, is Taylor invited Michaela? I am going to go out on a limb and say Taylor's invited. Now the only problem is the Met Gala is always in May and Taylor restarts her tour, her heiress tour in Europe in May. So I don't know if the schedules will align, but I would assume that she is invited. Um, she was not mentioned in the page six report, but Taylor Swift and Beyonce are two women who had an incredible year. And if they are not at the Met Gala, schedules permitting or I guess if they weren't invited I would be shocked I don't know if they'll be there because they're busy um but we'll see I would I, I will be speechless if Taylor and Travis go to the Met Gala together um he doesn't have to return for practice until July but we do know that he is going to be with her obviously while she's touring um in Paris Hopefully it works out. You know what I mean? Hopefully she doesn't have rehearsal and her and Travis can go to the Met Gala together. And just how iconic, because you know they will steal the show. And if Kim is there, you know that that's just gonna eat at her a little bit, that Taylor is stealing the show. You know what I mean? And then also, I think it will be interesting because I feel like if Kim and Taylor are at the Met Gala together, Kimberly Kardashian, that would be your chance to go up and do the public apology. And I need to see it with my own two eyes in order to forgive you for what you did to Taylor Swift. So if that is hap if that happens and Kim and Taylor are in the same place and Kim does not go up and apologize, you guys, I will have to drag. I will have to drag her just a, a skosh of a drag. A skosh of a drag because... You can get to post Taylor Swift songs on your Instagram story and act like everything's fine when Taylor has said, I need a public apology. You know what I mean? So if they are at the same place, at the same time, I need Kim to apologize. Laura said, I get you, but I don't want that woman near Taylor at all. T, but I need her to apologize. And I need to see it. You guys know I've said that a, pri a private apology is not good enough for me. You know what I mean? I need a public apology in order to really feel vindication. You know what I mean? Um, Tamara said, Madison, she's not gonna do that. She's too proud for that apology. I know Tamara, but I need to see it. I need to see it. And then let's see, always and forever said, Taylor and Selena and their boyfriends at the Met. I know, can you imagine? That would be iconic. Laura said, do you think she would genuinely apologize? Here's the thing about it being genuine. If it would be genuine because I feel like after years of watching Housewives, Kim would be one of those people who's like, 
I'm sorry you felt that way. You know what I mean? Instead of saying, I'm sorry for my actions, Kim gives me the vibes that she's somebody who's like, I'm sorry you felt that way. I'm sorry it came off that way. She does give me the vibes that she's like that. Um, but that still is better than nothing. You know what I mean? I still feel like at least an effort was made. Again, we're not forgetting. We're not forgetting what happened. We just want to see the effort of the public apology. You know what I mean? Dora said, I would gain so much respect for Kim if she did that. And Dora, same. Chloe, let's go ahead and move on also, you guys, and get into a little more tea about Chloe Kardashian. The internet is being very messy, you guys. <laughs> Superstar Bella said, Taylor stole the whole NFL from Kim. That she did, and it was deserved. Okay, sorry, moving on about Chloe, you guys. The internet is very messy. People have been extending their condolences to Khloe Kardashian since the news of OJ's passing. For those of you who missed it, OJ, news broke of his passing on Thursday. He died of cancer. Now, also, for those of you who don't know this, there has been a longtime conspiracy theory that OJ is, in fact, Khloe Kardashian's biological father, not Robert Kardashian. And this has been a rumor for years because, A, Chris admitted to cheating on Robert Kardashian throughout their marriage, and B, the woman who married uh, Robert Kardashian after Chris claims that he told her Chloe was not his child. However, Chloe has always maintained that Robert is her dad. She did a 23andMe and did a, you know, the DNA testing to prove that Robert is her dad. But it's always been this like ongoing rumor, ongoing conspiracy theory um, that OJ is Chloe's real father. And people have been so messy sending her their condolences, just saying a bunch of stuff for her, stuff to her. And my question to you guys is, is this too far or is this what we expect from the internet? I personally think it's like a little too far. You know what I mean? I feel like, oof, you guys, it's a little, it's a little much for maybe OJ's kids to look at, um, a little bit. A little bit uh, too tongue in cheek for me, just not the right timing. I don't really love that Chloe is getting this, but also at the same time, it's like what I expect from the internet. But I felt a little icky about it, and I was like, you know what? I know Chloe gets a bad rap, and people give Chloe a hard time, but I agree, Jules. It's nasty, poor taste. I just feel like. Come on, y'all. We're better than that. You know what I mean? Not we're here in the House of Hill. Obviously, we're not doing that. Um, but for people to be doing that to her, I just felt like icky to me, especially because Chloe has lost her dad and it's who she considered a father figure. And it's just because I see you guys going off about theories of Chris's driver, the hairdresser. Regardless, Chloe lost who she felt is her father. And for then people to still use this OJ conspiracy theory against her, even after his passing, it feels a little crazy. It feels a little bit much for me. Jessica said the internet can be vicious, and that's how I feel too. Naomi said, too far considering her real dad has passed and she's receiving sorry for your dad's passing messages. Naomi, that's how I feel too. You know what I mean? I'm just like, I don't love it. I don't love it. Simple Flamingo said, Where's the tactfulness anymore? Simple Flamingo, that's gone out the window. Like, I feel like people's moral compasses have just totally, I don't even know. They're just not working these days, clearly, if people are getting this, you know what I mean? It's, it's a bit much. It's a bit much in my opinion. But, you know, the internet's gonna internet, but I did feel for Chloe and going through that and still getting those comments. I feel for her. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and get into this Selena Gomez tea. Then we're gonna get into the Biebers and then Tavis. So if you've been waiting for Selena, the Biebers and Taylor and Travis, 
Now is your time to shine. Also, if you guys have not given this video a thumbs up yet, please go ahead and do so. I see there are over 330 of you watching. If you haven't given this video a thumbs up, it does help. So please go ahead and do so. Okay, topics left to discuss. Selena Beavers Tavis. Okay, Selena Gomez, you guys. She is out here clearing up rumors about her dating life. Throwback to 2020, 2021, there were rumors that Selena was casually dating JFK's grandson, Jack Schlossberg. I remember these rumors. I did a pop-off on these rumors. And it's funny because Selena, three, four years later, is now finally clearing these rumors up. She recently commented on a fan's Instagram post claiming that she dated Jack. And Selena commented saying, quote, never met this human, sorry. So I think it's a little funny that Selena, all these years later, is addressing the rumors, saying that she does not know this man. It's not true. And honestly, I feel like it's a little out of character for Selena to address this, but I also feel like this is Benny Blanco's influence because I feel like Benny Blanco very much has the attitude of who cares. I feel like Benny Blanco is like, let him talk, clap back, do what you want to do. Like, I just feel like Benny Blanco has really lightened Selena up when it comes to social media. And I just think it's hilarious that she commented on this. And I think it's hilarious that she addressed it all these years later. And truly, I feel like we have Benny Blanco to thank for that. I feel like he has given her the chutzpah and the confidence to just clap back on social media in a way like we haven't seen Selena in a really long time. And I just live for it. I feel like he doesn't care. I feel like he's so down for her and he just, he has no filter. And so now Selena is almost kind of developing that no filter mentality and attitude. And good for her. You know what I mean? I feel like for years, she has let conversations take place about her life on the internet and not said anything because she's like, I don't want to engage. But I'm not mad at seeing her engaged. Like, I'm kind of here for it. I'm living for it. Also, we have a new report from People Magazine where a source said, quote, Benny and Selena are so in love. It's a very serious relationship. And they're making long distance work while she's in New York for work commitments. So... You know, truthfully, they're happy, they're thriving. Selena is out here clearing the air about her past dating life. I was never like for sure confident that she was dating Jack Schlossberg. The evidence was kind of thin, I remember at the time. But I also remember at the time I was like, Selena, go off queen, go date JFK's grandson. That sounds incredible. Who doesn't want to be connected to the Kennedys? But it turns out she's never met that man. To, to quote Kiki Palmer, I have no idea who that man is. Um, and I honestly am just living for this new era that Selena is in, truthfully. Um, Tabitha said maybe she hadn't heard the rumor the last time around. Maybe, maybe, maybe. Maria said because she's not used to having social media on her phone. T. And Laura said Kiki Palmer's delivery was so iconic. Truly one of my favorite videos on the internet. Absolutely. And then Justice said, very happy for them. And I agree. Maria said, what was the evidence? The evidence was really thin. Um, this was like, again, this was four years ago. I feel like it had to do, he bought some merch or something like that. There was a like on Instagram. It was, it was thin evidence. It was not anything concrete by any means. And also, no, I've not seen the Jay Shetty interview in its entirety. I've only seen clips, so I need to watch the entire thing. Um, but again, you guys know, I'm very pro Selena and Betty now. I was not for them at the beginning, but as time has gone on, I am, I am now pro Selena and Betty. I like them together. I think they're a good couple. And I feel like we are seeing a confidence in Selena and a true genuine happiness um, that we haven't really seen from her with previous partners in a long time. Jelena said, I still got my guard up. Jelena said, I'm not trusting that man yet. And Jelena, I respect it. Sacred Space said, so many celebrities clap back and get praise for it. Selena always gets hate for it. I think it's funny she clapped back about it. Good for her. Sacred Space, I mean, you know, Selena can sneeze and people will be like, 
It was so offensive the way that Selena Gomez sneezed in public. She literally can never win. However, I feel like now in this Benny Blanco relationship, she cares less about that negativity she's receiving. You know what I mean? Because she's getting validation from the people in her life and that's really what matters for sure. Okay, let's go ahead you guys and move on and talk about the Biebers and Taylor Swift and Travis's almost run in. And then we're gonna talk individually about the Biebers and Tavis. So if you've been waiting for Bieber and Tavis tea, this, this last part of the happy hour hang is going to be for you. Biebers and Taylor almost having a run in you guys. So Taylor and Travis attended Ice Spices set at Coachella this weekend. And Justin and Hailey Bieber also attended Ice Spices set this weekend. And I'm giggling because Tamara said Mr. and Mrs. Goo Goo and never forget that that is their nickname for one another. Oh, talk about the ick. Anyway, you guys, in the crowd of Ice Spice, if you have seen the videos or if you haven't, let me tell you, Taylor and Travis were only separated by Justin by maybe like eight people. They were very close together in the crowd. They left, the Biebers left, then Taylor and Travis left. They almost had a run in, it was close. And I was dying because for those of you who don't know, um, Taylor does not love Justin Bieber because obviously she's not gonna love a man who treated her friend who allegedly treated her friend poorly, you know what I mean? Um, Taylor's been very open about the fact she does not mess with Justin Bieber. And if anything, I feel like Travis Kelsey is also very aware that Taylor does not mess with Justin Bieber. Um, and so I feel like it was best that there was no interaction. It was best that Justin did not turn his little head around because if he did, he would have made eye contact with Taylor and Travis. And I would not wanna be on the receiving end of a side eye from Travis Kelsey, you know what I mean? I mean, truthfully, if Justin tried anything with Taylor, Travis Kelsey would literally be like, flick, flick. Like, it would take nothing for him to defend his leading lady. Um, but it is crazy how close they really were. Laura said, I mean, also the fact that Justin bullied Taylor publicly siding with Scooter and Kanye. Also that, you know what I mean? I try not to think about the scooter situation because it really grinds my gears, but also T. Regardless, they don't mess with one another. They don't get along. They were really close to each other in the crowd. And I'm happy, for Justin's sake, I'm happy that they they didn't see each other because I do feel like that would have probably gone awry. Even though time has passed, um, and again, I know mostly everyone's moved on, but I just feel like it's best that they didn't have a run in with one another. Zaya said, who's more famous, Justin Bieber or Taylor? Um, I'll let you guys vote. Who's more famous, Justin Bieber or Taylor? I feel like, I feel like Justin still has a household name Honestly, like he does. I feel like Justin is still the Justin Bieber. You know what I mean? Obviously, he is an icon for a lot of people. But when it comes to who is maintaining their fame and who's putting in the work to continue being an influence worldwide, obviously, we have to say Taylor. You know what I mean? It, I feel like that's a hard comparison because like Justin hasn't been doing anything. Taylor has been literally crushing it. Um, so I feel like that's a hard comparison to make. Um, Maria said globally, I think Justin, you know, some people are saying Taylor. I feel like it's hard for me to be completely unbiased in that situation because obviously I'm more of a fan of Taylor. Um, but I will say, I think Justin is, Justin is the Justin Bieber. You know what I mean? Love him, hate him, regardless of how you feel about the guy. He is iconic. He, he is iconic. He has a very long career. 
Um, I just feel like Taylor right now is doing more than Justin, but that's just my own opinion. You know what I mean? Um, regardless, no interaction between Justin and Taylor took place. Um, I saw some of you being messy saying that Sabrina was hanging out with Taylor and Travis, who was near Justin Bieber, and maybe Justin was trying to get a glimpse of Sabrina. <laughs> Again, I think him following Sabrina Carpenter on Instagram is solely, solely work-related. At least that's what I think, and that's what I hope. You know what I mean? Um, Autumn said, I feel like Taylor doesn't like Justin because of everything that happened with Scooter, and then you have the toxic relationship him and Selena had. Autumn, one million percent. And you know what? I can't fault Taylor for that because, again, I'm a Taurus. You do something to somebody that I love, I'm, I'm coming for you. You know what I mean? Like, I will never mess with you in that way again because you mess with somebody who I love. So I'm never going to be super cool with you. You know, I'll be cordial. I'll be kind. I'll be polite. But I'm never going to forget that you messed with somebody I loved. And then on top of that, you also bullied me online and sided with a man who was awful to me. That's three strikes you're out in my opinion. You know what I mean? Um, and that's how Taylor feels about him. And regardless of you can be the biggest Justin Bieber fan ever, I think it's also fine to acknowledge like it's totally okay that him and Taylor don't mess with one another. Nothing wrong with it. It's fine. Justin doesn't mess with Taylor. I don't think Justin Bieber likes Taylor and Taylor doesn't like Justin Bieber. I feel like it's mutual. You know what I mean? I feel like they both don't want to run into one another. They both don't want anything to do with one another. And that is 1 million percent okay. Okay. Let's talk more specifically about the Biebers, and then we'll get into specifics about Taylor and Travis. I do agree with you, Gigi. Gigi said, the Diddy Bieber connection is scary, and I agree. You guys know I, I have been saying this whole time, when it comes to Justin and Hailey Bieber's alleged marital troubles, I think that they have, I think they are going through a tough time because I think they're going through a lot. One of those things being Diddy. I feel like the old videos of Diddy and Justin resurfacing has to be difficult. I think they're creepy. I think people are looking at them through a new lens. And I think Justin being included in those conversations has to be hard for him and Haley. Um, anyway, Justin and Haley were at Coachella. Haley was there. I saw someone say, was Haley at Coachella? Yes, Haley was at Coachella. She was there with Justin. Um, the two were seen dancing, having a really cute moment while watching Lana Del Rey. Um, Justin was like kissing Haley's head. They were kind of dancing, you know, um, giving very much married couple, very much giving off the vibe. We're not getting divorced, really trying to sell the people. Everything is fine. Everything's peachy keen. Um, and as we've said time and time again, or at least as I've said time and time again, um, I don't believe that they're getting a divorce tomorrow. I think they're going to try to work through whatever they're going through in their marriage. Um, Gigi said in one, in one Bieber looked like he was possibly on something. I do feel like I saw videos of him smoking weed, which weed is legal. You know what I mean? Um, it's fine that he was doing that. Um, I did see a video of him seemingly um partaking in that but I mean it's legal he's free to do so um Marie he did sing on stage he did surprise everybody on um he did surprise everybody during Tem's set Tem's Coachella set um so that was fun it was fun to see him on stage you know what I mean and also another thing that people are talking about is a viral moment between Justin and Jaden Smith. Jaden was seen coming up to like greet Justin Bieber from behind and Justin kind of like kissed his neck. Um, and people have really been going off about this reaction or going off about this interaction um, of Justin and Jaden. Look it up, it's literally all over TikTok, you guys. It's um, greet. <laughs> You guys, I don't know how else to say it. 
he, he, he was coming up to greet him. I don't know. I don't know. I feel like people have been really been, people have really been going off about this interaction about the way Jaden came up on him from behind and Justin kissing him on the neck. You know what? Here's the thing. I don't know about Justin and Jaden's friendship. I, it looked to me like Jaden was coming up, like kind of messing with Justin Bieber. And that was just like a little bit that they have. Like it did not feel, I feel like people are blowing it out of proportion. I saw someone say that. Jelena said they're blowing it out of proportion. That's how I kind of feel too. Like they've been friends forever. They're like brothers. People need friends, it seems, Irene said. Chrissy said, I really don't see anything wrong with it. I honestly think it was all innocent, like they were getting ready to sm That's how I feel like, too. I really, Noelia said, I think people are looking too far into it. Emily said, I feel like that's normal for them and friendly. That's, again, I think you can look at that video of Justin and Jaden and see, see it two different ways. Julie said, groping. Other people saying, I think they're just friendly. And that's how I, I, I truly feel like it was just their friendship, their way of communicating. I don't think it was anything more than that. I think people are, are definitely blowing it up. I think that's just Jaden and Justin's friendship. But of course, people are going to see it however they want to see it. And people are going to have their opinions on it because that's how things work. Autumn said, I heard Benny Blanco hosted a private Coachella party and him and Selena invited Taylor and Travis. I would love to be a fly on the wall at that after party. Autumn, I would have liked to be a fly on the wall at every party that Taylor and Travis were at. Are you freaking kidding me? That's the tea. That is the tea. Um, Noelia said, are people trying to say that Justin is gay? Bye. You know what? I, I will say some of the comments are coming off like everyone grow up it's 2024 you know what I mean I don't even I think people are just like commenting on it to comment on it because some people felt like the interaction was weird again Delana said society has such a problem with men showing affection towards one another if they were women we would say nothing and that's kind of how I feel too Dave said friends have weird rituals like I I just felt like it was something that they like it's like a bit between them and that's what I thought. That's what I thought when I saw it. I still feel that way. Leslie said, "Us girls can do that, and no one thinks twice." Like the amount of times I've gone up and slapped, like got up and slapped one of my friends on their butt. You know what I mean? Um, and no one would think twice about that. You know what I mean? Um, the amount of times my friends have come up and smacked me on the butt. No one would think twice. Which I understand. This thing takes up a lot of real estate. Sometimes you just gotta smack it to get it out of the way. Um, again, I think it was a bit. I think it was friends being friends, and I think the internet loves to talk. But I do have a question. Um, what you guys think about Justin being out and about more? Like, are we liking that Justin was out and about? Are we liking that he was, you know, out in public, out at Coachella? We really haven't seen him and Haley attend anything publicly together in a long time, which is why I do think it was convenient that they both made sure to be there at Coachella and make sure to have a PDA little moment caught on camera. Good for them. Um, but I feel like it was refreshing, honestly, to see Justin out in public. I feel like it was reassuring. I feel like people have, you know, been making so many speculations about Justin that I feel like it was probably a good thing for him to get out there, a good thing for people to see him with his friends, and a good thing for him to be out with Haley, in my opinion. Zaya said, I'm happy he's alive. I'm happy he's alive and he does need and he does need to divorce <laughs> Haley. Oh, girl, at least we're happy he's alive, Zaya. We're happy he is alive. Uh, Jen said, I was glad to see him. I feel for Justin lately. True Color said, I like it, but I still feel like something is wrong with him. Hope he's okay. I hope so too. And Lisa said, Justin's always on TikTok with Haley Live. Love that. Jessica said, I don't think he'll go to the Met Gala because of all the people always chanting Selena. I think he's probably traumatized. 
I feel like that will be really a true test if he goes to the Met Gala. If he goes to the Met Gala, then I'm going to believe that he is starting to kind of want to get back out in public, maybe think about performing a little bit more, maybe start getting back out there more consistently. If he goes to the Met Gala, I'm going to start thinking that. Um, but obviously, we'll see. We will see what happens. Um, but I was happy to see him. I was happy to see him hanging out with friends, and I felt like it was needed. Like, TBH, after all of the stuff we've been hearing about Justin and Haley, we needed to see him with Haley in public. Do I think this will calm down the divorce rumors? Absolutely freaking not. But at least we saw him in public. Um, yes, he did take the stage for, he did a guest spot. Um, Bella, he did. He sang one song. So he did get up there on stage. And that's what I'm saying. If we take into the fact he went to Coachella he did do a guest performance, and if he goes to the mat, I'm going to think that he's starting to get his groove back. He's starting to be in public a little bit more. Um, not very much was said about it. You're right, Tammy. I feel like reports about him guest being a guest um, at Coachella really didn't start popping up until this afternoon. Okay, let's go ahead and move on and talk about Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey. You, oh my gosh, you guys. I always get excited when you hear about something first here. Um, but yes, he did. He did make a surprise appearance at Coachella. Um, and not a lot of people are talking about it. Why? I don't know. But he did. And it, I think it's good. I think it's good that he's getting himself back out there. You know what I mean? Uh, Lisa, Lisa, thank you so much. Thank you, Lisa for the cute little hearts and the three in the balloon. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay, Taylor Swift and Travis Kelsey, you guys. The Coachella PDA content was almost too much to handle. Are you kidding of me? We saw so many photos and videos of Taylor and Travis. We saw videos of them backstage during Jack Antonoff's band. We saw that they were in the crowd for Ice Spice and just being cute AF. We also saw Travis pick Taylor up so she could see the stage during Dom Dalla's set. Yes, we saw Taylor wearing a new Heights hat, which is Travis and Jason's podcast. Um, they also were seen making out in the VIP area at the Neon Carnival after party. It just honestly was too much to bear. 333 people, you guys. Manifest what you want to manifest. It was absolutely incredible. Jessica said, Tavis time. Nan will be happy. Jessica, you need to tell Nan that Taylor and Travis were the cutest couple at Coachella, and you cannot tell me any different. We love that Nan is a Tavis stan, just like all of us. Rosa said, laughing, singing, drinking. You need a joy for your life. Absolutely. They were living their best life. Allie said, I've been living for the videos and photos. You guys, even the comparisons, like I've seen comparison photos of when she attended Coachella with Calvin Harris versus her attending Coachella with Travis Kelsey. Night and day. Again, I don't know how you could see these two together in public and think, oh my God, PR stunt absolutely not like the way she looks so comfortable with him it is like something we've never seen before and I know I sound so nerdy and like lame when I say this but as a fan of Taylor Swift and as someone who's been a Swifty for a long time the joy it brings me to see her be so comfortable in public like that unmatched you know what I mean like it truly is like something we have never seen we have never seen Taylor Swift melt in the arms of a man in public like that. We have never seen her feel, or I guess at least she appears to be protected, uh, to Jessica's point. She appears to be not stressed. She appears to just genuinely be happy, living her life, and not caring. Not caring that people are filming her. Not caring that people are watching them like hawks. Like literally just living her life. Dave said, Bleachella Taylor was on edge. She looked smitten and chill this weekend. So true, Dave. It just like night and day. 
You can really see the difference. Bella said, exactly. You can see she's no longer looking over her shoulders. I love that he doesn't get overwhelmed by the attention. And Travis, I just feel like they, he was vibing. Like, you know the saying, nothing but vibes? Like, Travis was nothing but vibes. And I feel like he made sure Taylor knew he had her back. I got you. We're here having fun, living life. And I just, I cannot get enough of it. Like, I cannot stop watching videos of them in Coachella. Call me a loser. It is what it is. I'm a hopeless romantic, and I'm proud of it, and I am loving all of the Taylor and Travis content. E. Delon said, I wish Benny and Selena were at Coachella. Is this how you spell it, LOL? Yes, it is. Better yet, I wish Justin and Benny had shared the stage singing. You know, E, I don't know if Justin Bieber and Benny will ever share a stage again now that he is dating Selena Gomez. And I hate to be the bearer of bad news. I hate to be the person who says that to you because I can tell you want a Justin and Benny moment to happen. But I feel like now that Benny is dating Selena, I don't know if it will. You never know. You never know. That would be iconic. That would be iconic for sure. But I don't know if it will happen. I don't know. I hope for your sake it does, but I don't know. Uh, Epic Turtle said the protector and provider energy was everything. And may I just say, what is it about seeing Travis Kelsey be a protector of Taylor Swift that is just so attractive? You know what I mean? Like, I've obviously always thought he's cute. I thought Travis Kelsey was hot before he started dating Taylor Swift. I've been a Chiefs fan forever. But there's just something about seeing that man make sure she is protected and, like, reassuring her and leading her through the crowd and having her back that makes him... 5,000 times more attractive than he already is. You know what I mean? Again, I am, I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed in not a good way, truly. Um, also, I wanted to let you guys know that we did get a new report from People Magazine where a source said that Taylor and Travis were excited to attend Coachella together and that they're all about quality time together before Taylor resumes her tour. Even though, obviously, Travis is planning on spending time with her until he has to go back. Um, but yeah, you guys, it's just great. They're in love. It's stupid how much I care. I'm obsessed with it. Again, I think it's because I'm a hopeless romantic. I'm obviously individually a fan of Travis, individually a fan of Taylor, and I'm obsessed. Brooke said, finally caught a happy hour hang. Madison, you are lovely. Thank you, Brooke. I'm so happy you caught a happy hour hang. And also, um, I'm sorry that you're catching it right at the point where we're done discussing the tea and I'm just fangirling over Taylor and Travis. So hopefully you go back and <laughs> catch up on the other tea that you missed. Also, I saw Dave talk about SNL. Um, old Taylor gave props to Ryan Gosling's All Too Well version saying goodbye to Ken. I don't know if you guys saw that, but she also co-signed it, was a big fan of it. Um, and I'm just like, I'm so here for it. Jelena said, normalize feeling happy for seeing other people happy. And I think that's the thing. I feel like, and you guys know we've talked about this in regards to a lot of celebrities. I feel like for some reason, the majority of people hate seeing other people happy. And people love to tear down happy people. And I think that's one of my favorite things here in the House of Hill. Like, even I know some of y'all are so sick of me talking about Tavis. And you're like, Madison, I'm not a Tavis fan. But I love that you love Tavis. Or Selena Gomez and Benny Blanco. Or even Ariana and Ethan Slater. You know what I mean? It's like, we can at least step back and be happy for people who are happy. And that is why... I live for us here in the House of Hill. Even if we don't necessarily like love said couple together, if someone is happy, we can at least take a step back and say, I'm happy, they're happy. Uh, Jen said, I'm not one to want Selena and Justin back together, but I do think it would be awesome if they had a Jennifer Aniston, Brad Pitt reconnection moment in like 20 years. Jen, I see what you're saying because I feel like there's still a lot of conversations of like Justin and Selena and I think anyone who is truly a fan of Justin or Selena or Justin and Selena would know that they should not be back together. They should not get back together. They are not meant to be. Neither of them wants to get back together. But I agree with you. It would be nice to see them get to a place where they can be cordial, um, like Brad Pitt and Jennifer Aniston. I don't know if that will ever happen. 
I don't know if that'll ever happen, but we'll see. We'll see. You know what? Time heal. Time can heal a lot of wounds. I don't want to say it will heal all wounds, but it can heal some wounds, and you never know. We will, we will see what happens if they can at least be cordial. Not ever getting back together, but like where they can be in a Zoom and say hi to one another and move on. Nobody wants to see Justin and Selena back together. Nobody wants that. Uh, Kelsey said, hi, House of Health, ma'am. Finally made it home from my daughter's Taekwondo, cooking dinner and made it on. Kelsey, I think that's pretty BA that your daughter takes Taekwondo, number one. And two, I'm happy you're here. Definitely go back and catch up on all of the tea you missed. Superstar Bella said, Jennifer Anderson and Brad had a different kind of relationship, but Brad for sure got his karma. That is the tea, and Brad is still dealing with fallout from Angelina Jolie. She's still coming at him, making accusations and all that. I also, I do feel like they had a little bit of a different relationship, but I don't, I don't think Justin and Selena will ever be as friendly as Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt. Like, I don't think they're ever going to be that level of friendly and cool. Also, you have to remember, Jennifer Aniston and Brad Pitt were married. Justin and Selena were never married, so I feel like that's a different level. Um... But hopefully they could at least just be cordial. You know what I mean? And if they're at an event with one another, it's not going to be a headline of Justin and Selena, awkward running. It's just, a, it's fine that Justin and Selena were both at the same event at the same time. So hopefully they can get to that point. You know what I mean? We'll see. Um, Michaela said, you know, it's bad when your kids hate you. Brad apparently was a terrible father. Yeah, there has been so much fallout from Brad and Angelina's divorce. I think he still talks to some of his kids, but not all of the kids. It's like a thing. It's it's crazy. Um, but yeah, you guys, that's all I have for you in regards to this happy hour hang. We see today, someone said, how long are these happy hour hangs? And of course, today is a day that I went really, really, really long. Um, and we still have 300 people here. If you're here and you've not given this video a thumbs up yet, please, please, please go ahead and do so. Also, Pinky, promise me if you're still here that you will tune in to Wednesday's live happy hour hang at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. Please make sure you tune in. Um, also, you guys, please make sure you give this video a thumbs up. Please make sure you're subscribed. Please make sure your notification bell is on so that way whenever YouTube notifications do work, you make sure you get your notification. You know the best way to make sure you're on time for a live happy hour hang, unfortunately, is to just set your own alarm. Also, yes, we are only a few days away from Taylor Swift blessing us with a new album, you guys. I'm so freaking pumped. The countdown has begun. Well, let's be honest, we've been, count we've been counting down for a while, um, but it's finally the week. I am so blessed that Taylor is releasing this album at the beginning of Taurus season. Yes, we will make sure we are listening to it. I have not forgotten that we want to do a vertical live um, to listen to Taylor Swift's new album. I have not forgotten. You guys, if you're not following me on Instagram and TikTok, please make sure you're doing so at I am Madison Hill. Also, uh, make sure to share uh, this video. Share the House of Hill. Let somebody know um, in your life about the House of Hill. If you know somebody who likes celeb tea and just wants to be part of a fun community, um, make sure to let them know about us. You can DM me, Timna, at I am Madison Hill on Instagram. I'm going to go ahead and put it uh, in the chat for you guys if it will. Oh, hold on. My all caps are on. That was a bit aggressive. Um, here we go. That is my Instagram, you guys. If you are not following me, please go ahead and do so. Also, Rosa, happy birthday to your mom. Um, tomorrow will be my mom's birthday. She would have been 92. This is my first year without her trying to keep my mind busy. Rosa, my heart goes out to you. I'm sending you so much love. So, so, so much love. Uh, we are here for you. I will try um, to either do a vertical live or put out a pop-off tomorrow to just kind of help take your mind off of everything. Know that the House of Hill is here for you. We love you. Um, and you guys, just thank you so much for a fantastic, fantastic happy hour hang. I will see you all on Wednesday at 3.30 Pacific Standard Time. And in the meantime, have a fantastic rest of your evening. And I'll see you all later. Bye.